A very warm welcome to you Apache Druid community members across the world to this fourth virtual Druid Summit. My name is Peter Marshall. I am an Apache Druid technology evangelist in the community team here at Imply. I'm glad to say hundreds of people have registered for our talks today from the ever expanding Druid community. And following our first presentation by Gian Melino a moment ago, it's time to offer my very warm welcome to our second presenter of the summit, Daria Litvinov from Outbrain. A little bit of meeting hygiene. Everyone will be on mute throughout the session, but that doesn't mean you can't get involved. There'll be live tweeting throughout, so be sure to follow the Druid handle on Twitter. And rather than using the chat window, please do drop your questions into the dedicated Q&A section of the Zoom webinar panel, which I think is down here somewhere. And we will pick those up at the end of the presentation with Daria. You're also welcome to join the community on the SF Slack channel and say hello to your fellow members around the world. Any questions that we don't have time to answer today, we will respond to in a follow up blog post and links to the full presentation and to all the accompanying slides will be sent following the session. Uh, Daria is the DataX Group Tech Lead at Outbrain, and she joins us all today to present uh, her talk, One Event to Rule Them All, Moving Real-Time Analytics to the Next Level. Daria, welcome to the Apache Druid Virtual Summit. Thank you so much for your many years of excellent Druid talks. I'm very much looking forward to hearing your new talk. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. So hi, everyone. I'm Daria, I work for Outbrain. I'm excited to be here today. And I'm gonna talk about how we analyze our real-time data using Druid. Few words about me. I'm a software engineer with more than 15 years of experience. Last several years, I'm dealing mostly with the big data technologies such as Druid, Spark Streaming, and Kafka, and actually bringing the, our real-time data to data analysts and R&D teams at Outbrain. What is Outbrain? Outbrain is a content discovery platform. We use targeted advertising to recommend articles or videos to a user. We provide content recommendations on, on websites, applications, and new news feeds. We are installed on premium publisher sites such as CNN, MSN, Sky News, BBC, and many others. We help users or readers to discover interesting content. We actually provide those recommended by Outbrain links to additional content to videos or articles, and probably some of you have seen our recommendations. We use a lot of technology to provide those recommendations, and we do it at high scale. We use a variety of systems in our backend. Um, our technology stack is quite uh, big, and we use many databases for many use cases. So we have Hadoop, HDFS, we have Hive, we have Vertica, MySQL, Cassandra clusters, classic, uh, clusters of Elasticsearch. So we have so many uh, systems. Why do we need Druid? So we use Druid for real time. This is our main use case and our main benefit from this tool. So the agenda for my talk today, I will uh, show our architecture for real-time analytics. I will present the real-time event, our big data model that we have built. I will show how we manipulate data, how we use this uh, real-time event data model uh, for our KPIs and our needs. I will explain our approach regarding the scale, how we deal with high scale and how we do it cross system. So let's get started. Apache Druid, I assume that most of you are familiar with the tool, that most of you have seen those bullets before. I just go through them very quickly if you've seen them for those who are new. So Apache Druid is a column-oriented distributed data store. It enables the ingestion of high volumes of event data. It gets high performance of slice and dice analytics, and it supports low latency queries. And this tool is actually very commonly used in BI. 
Uh, as I already mentioned, we used Druid for real time. Uh, our services write events to Kafka. And since Druid has great integration with, with Kafka, so we send our real time data to Druid and we also use Pivot for visualization and for analytics. Uh, the, our architecture for real time analytics looks like this. On the left side, we have our initial uh, raw data in Kafka. This is the Kafka topic where our services write to. And then we have Spark streaming job that processes these events, adds more data and reaches every event and writes events to another Kafka topic in JSON format enriched with enriched uh, data. And now this Kafka topic uh, actually goes to Druid. We have, be, we have uh, built several use cases using this uh, architecture. We have uh, clicks, we, we, we brought click events to Druid and impressions and other types of events. And uh, it's actually totally separate use cases. Like th there is a separate data source in Druid for every type of event. And we have separate data cubes in pivot so we kind of uh, we could build a dashboard in pivot and put those events like side by side but it's nice but it's not good enough we were looking for some a uh, more powerful uh, data model to get more, more insights in our real-time data in, in Druid. So we have built a more complicated use case, a more complicated data model. We call it real-time event. And the, actually this is the union of, may, of several types of events that we bring to Druid. Let's take a look how it, how it works. So uh, as usually in our case, uh, it starts with Kafka topics. Uh, so again, we have uh, many, uh, we have Kafka topics per types of event, like we have clicks, impressions, requests, video events, and many others. And uh, similar to the previous architecture, we also have a Spark stream. But now uh, this Spark streaming jobs write output event to the same Kafka topic. So now this Kafka topic, the real time event right here, it contains the union of several types of events. And uh, therefore the, the, the Druid, the data source in Druid also contains the union uh, of several types of events, all types of events in one place. So uh, Actually, this is a big picture. Let's take a look what kind of logic do we have in our Spark streaming jobs. Spark streaming jobs, uh, first of all, they are stateless. We don't have any aggregation or stuff like this. They all read events from one Kafka topic, add some manipulation to those events and write to output. So first of all, uh, these jobs uh, write common names, co common field names to events. Like sometimes our events, uh, they are coming from different sources and they are not aligned with common field names. So this is what uh, we, we do in our Spark streaming jobs, like publisher ID, widget ID, some common fields for all events. Another thing that they do, they add event type for every type for each event, so we can distinguish them later in, in Druid. And the additional thing that uh, Spark streaming jobs do, they add multiple binary counters, kind of flex to every to every event. This counter is depends on our business logic. Uh, for example, Spark streaming job that processes clicks can validate the click status. And if this status is uh, valid, so it can just put valid paid click equals one to this specific event, and we will use it later. So we have many counters like this, and I will show how we use it later in, uh, in Druid. Okay. Um, 
this is the visual representation of the table, how it looks. So we have a, the timestamp field, of course. We have event type. This is a, the field that we set for every event. So we can see that we have clicks and impressions. And actually, we have many more. We have about, we have eight, actually, different types of events. And uh, we have fields for all of them. Some fields are common, like publisher, country, and stuff like this. But actually, we have many other columns in this uh, data source. Some columns are relevant only for one type of event, and it actually works fine. It's, we have null values for other types of events. And um, so this is a union of the types of events and kind of union of uh, columns. Okay, uh, so we have built it, we have huge data source. What do we do with it now? How can we actually calculate our business KPIs using this data model? Um, there are some popular uh, KPIs in EdTech technology. It's called a CTR, which is clicks, through rate, it actually calculates the number of clicks divided by number of impressions. And uh, another popular KPI is RPM, which stands for revenue per mile or revenue per 1,000th of impressions. In order to calculate this matrix, we need to calculate gross revenue first. And so let's take a look how we calculate these KPIs using this our union data model, our real-time event. And so here in, the exa in this example, you can see that we have uh, three clicks and five impressions, okay? So in order to calculate the CTR, we divide three by five and we have 60% of CTR, click through rate. And uh, in order to calculate gross revenue, we actually should sum uh, the revenue columns, which is CPC and CPI. CPC stands for cost per click. This field is for clicks events. And CPI is cost per impressions. Uh, it gets the revenue per impression. So we just need to sum these two uh, fields and we will get gross revenue. Okay, nice, but how actually do, do you need to run SQL queries for getting this? It's possible to, to, select, to write a select statement in SQL and get these metrics. But I want to show you some kind of optimization that we have added here. Okay. When a data, when Root ingests the data from Kafka topic, it uses the ingestion spec. And I will show you what kind of manipulation you can add in the ingestion spec before the data goes to Druid. And uh, in addition, we work with Pivot, which is a vis visualization tool on top of Dr Druid. I will show you how we calculate our measures also in Pivot. So Kafka ingestion spec, it's actually a big JSON file which defines all details regarding the ingestion. It defines the name of the data source and which Kafka topic to consume and where the Kafka brokers, the URL for Kafka brokers in case of Kafka ingestion. It defines the primary timestamp field and all the fields, all the dimensions that's gonna be in the data source. It's kind of DDL if you're coming from databases world. And finally, it has the transformation spec. Transformation spec defines additional manipulation on the data. Like this is the example taken from Druid tutorial, Druid website. You can see here the string manipulation, like concatenate some prefix to a field. You can see also the example of some math expression like multiple. Um, we use transformation spec quite a lot. And actually, why is it so good? Why is it beneficial? Because this transformation spec runs in the ingestion time. 
the transformation transformed fields they are actually uh, saved uh, in root segments and they they defined just an, another field in the data source so you can select them later using reg SQL statement you can access the table and select it it will save the query time because it's already uh, transformed and calculated and everything is ingested in, in root. We use transformation spec quite a lot. So here the example of how we calculate gross revenue. Uh, gross revenue in our case uh, depends on several types of events. It has the click part and impressions and we have revenue take, come, coming from video events. So we have a formula that takes all these events separately. And actually we use here the click and pay depression and video events. These are Boolean flags that we set in our Spark streaming job. Okay, so the click value will be one only for click events. So we will multiply it by cost per click and this record will uh, contribute to the revenue. For other types of events, uh, the click will be zero. So this formula will not uh, get the gross revenue. Okay, so this is how we calculate uh, gross revenue based on several types of impression of uh, events, sorry. Okay. Um, this is the example, like when you have the formula, which just multiple sum or sum and multiply, multiply some fields. So you can use it in the ingestion spec. In case of CTR, when you divide number of clicks by number of impression, you can uh, calculate it in the ingestion spec. So we use pivot for this. This is the example of how we calculate clicks rate in pivot. Here is the pivot formula. Uh, so we take number of clicks, which is the matrix in pivot, we divide it by number of impression and we get this uh, measure in pivot. And once we define it, so it gets all the other features of pivot like uh, filtering grew by compared to previous uh, periods and stuff like this. So we also use this a lot. Let's have a quick recap of what do we have here. We actually built a big data model which is based on union on several types of events. Um, and actually this is, uh, all this is very big. Like we have billions of impressions per day and we have billions of other events as well. So we kind of need to write them again in Kafka and we need to add them to Druid. So our clusters should be huge, like Kafka clusters, we should increase it and we should increase Druid. And uh, also the we need to understand the requirements of this system. As I mentioned, we have a lot of other systems in Root, in, in, sorry, in Outbrain. So we use Root mostly for troubleshooting, for analytics, for visual analytics, and also for detecting trends. So we can kind of lose some precision in this, uh, in this system. So when we address the scale, um, we need to think how to solve this problem with the scale. There are two ways to deal with the scale using Druid. First, first way is to use Rollup. Rollup is a built-in feature in Druid. You define the Rollup uh, fields and the Druid pre-aggregates the data in the ingest time. And actually you doesn't lose any precision in this case, but for our case, for real time event, roll up doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not good because we have big number of, of fields, big, big number of dimensions, more than 100 different columns. So roll up will not help us in this, in this uh, use case. Okay, roll up, you need to be very specific 
when you use rope. We use rope in our in other uh, use case in Druid. It works great, but for real time event, we need some other uh, solution. So we decided to sample our data for handle the scale. We bring the portion of the data to Druid. Actually, we sample our data in Spark. It's very easy. Uh, Spark has this out of the box uh, built in uh, function rdd.sample. Okay, and you just send the sample rate. All our Spark streaming jobs get sample rate as a parameter. So, for example, we can sample just one percentage of the traffic. And that's all. rdd.sample does the job fine. But what happens now? We have portion of the traffic that sample data in Druid, right? And how can we work with numbers that we have in Druid? We need to know how many clicks do we have? How many impressions? How many other events do we have? And now should we multiple it, these numbers? How can we treat these numbers? And how can we, it, you let other teams to use Druid. They are not aware of our sampling. So how all this should work. In addition, we sample uh, different streams with different sample rates. For example, impressions is a huge stream. We bring only 1% of them to Druid. But our billing events like clicks, we, we don't sample them. We bring all of them to Druid. So we have sample data in one place and with different sample rate, it could be kind of mess, right? So we use some nice trick during the sampling. We calculate sample factor, which is one divided by sample rate. You can see it here in, the, in this line, sample factor equals one divided sample rate. So if sample rate is 1%, the sample factor is going to be 100. And we actually put this uh, dimension, this uh, sample factor to each event. So we will have this sample factor in Druid, OK? So when we have this sample factor, we add, we calcul actually calculate all normalized metrics for all important data that we need using transformation spec. And we use sample factor, factor in all our expression, in all our uh, formulas. You can see that we can we calculate number of expression, normalize, this is our, uh, we sign our uh, matrix with underscore n. So we know that this matrix is normalized by sample factor. So we just take this flag, like impression, this is the Boolean flag from the, Spark streaming multiplied by sample factor. So now every event is multiplied. If we sample 1%, it's going to be multiplied by 100 because every single impression now contributes like 100 of impressions. And the same regarding the click, we number of clicks, we also multiply it by its sample factor. So we add, um, actually, we calculate a normalized. Uh, dimensions for all important metrics. So our data analysts, they know that they can use it as they, they don't need to care about the sampling. So this is the fixed formula for gross revenue. As you can see, we added sample factor to each uh, part of the expression like uh, click, uh, multiple cost per click, multiple sample factor, and the same regarding impression and video event. So uh, when we started sampling, we kind of fixed our uh, Spark, uh, no, sorry, Kafka ingestion spec, and we added sample factor to all our formulas. And now it works great. We can trust our numbers in Druid. Um, so uh, sorry, uh, sampling helped us a lot to, to handle the scale. But when our teams started using uh, the system, this uh, data model, we faced the problem that 
sometimes they need to get some portion of the traffic to be not simple, to be like 100% of some specific events. So we, we solved it, we, we developed internal tool, internal service that enables other teams to define a sample policy. They add this time of event like clicks or impressions, they need to be sampled with this attribute need to be sampled like uh, in clicks for some uh, publisher or impressions for some location or stuff like this. They add event type and which attribute gonna be sampled, gonna be not sampled, like 100% of sampling for some period of time. Let's see an example. So, for, so we want to define um, that we need some one, all impressions for publisher pub 1000. So in Druid, all other publishers are sampled, okay? Like the, the sample factor is 100. And this specific publisher, Pub100, is not sampled. Like when Spark Streaming Jobs see this event, just write it to output, to Kafka topic without sampling. So their sample factor is one, okay? So, um, we have our transformation spec with sample factor and our formulas are still correct, you, even if some of the traffic is not sampled, okay? So we kind of solve this problem for other teams and now they can define, to define their traffic and to investigate some portion of the traffic they get interested. So I'd like to summarize a uh, real-time event is our big uh, data model. It is built using union paradigm. Like we bring several, it is built on uh, several types of event that we bring to one data source to do it. It is very wide use case because it defines more than 100 different dimensions. It means that many teams can work with the same data source because usually some team, they need some specific uh, attributes or fields and other team work with other attributes. And we bring so many dimensions that it helps many teams at Outbrain to work with it. We sample data in order to handle big scale, in order to bring to our scale is more than billion events per day. So we, we sample our data and actually we find, found a way how to fix the data in the spec, how to build the formulas. So then the data, all other the metrics are correct and are the teams uh, can use it transparently without uh, thinking about the sampling. And actually all this architecture and all this model is quite flexible. Like we started with two types events and we see that it works and we added some formulas and we added some KPIs in, in Druid and also in Pivot and we see that it works. And then we started adding more and more events. And actually when you add more events in this architecture, you don't break the things. You just, you write new Spark Streaming job and you add more events to Kafka topic and then to Druid. And uh, then you can fix your formula. You can see, look, you look at the, the new events. You can validate them with other systems, see that it's okay. And then you can add them to the common formula. So the whole model is very flexible. Also the sampling, like the sample, the whole traffic and uh, some do not sample part of the traffic. Also, it's very it's very flexible. We can find a way find a way how to use it and add more events. So we it is very useful without brain. And um, actually, that's it. I'd like to take uh, questions if you have. Thank you. Thank you, Daria. 
uh, again, very good talk. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have questions. Um, the first question is actually one that I had as well. Um, how did you make the decision? How did you distinguish between those transformations that you wanted to do in Spark Streaming and the transformations that you wanted to handle in Druid? How did you make that decision? Yeah, okay, good question. So actually, uh, we also we always have debates uh, regarding this in the team. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, all the normalization, like uh, sampling factor, we do it in Kafka stack because I think it's more correct. Like Spark streaming job, they just mark the events, they calculate the sample factor, and th that's it actually. Because sometimes I, as a developer, I do look at the raw number of events without normalization okay like to see how real what is the volumes what volumes do we have before the normalization okay because normalization is kind of multiple by 100 or 1000 doesn't matter okay and uh, gross revenue for example the formula like gross revenue i can't put it to spark streaming because we have separate job for click and for impression and for video and so on and i have all this data only in druid so only there i can calculate the gross revenue which is based on all types of revenue events okay so, so it depends actually okay uh, some of our Spark Streaming jobs uh, implement quite complicated logic, okay? Um, so if this logic depends on one specific event, because our Spark Streaming jobs are stateless, so I would prefer to do it in Spark Streaming job if I can. Mm. Okay? If something in some logic depends on many types of events, I would do it in the stack. Cool. Um, I would like to keep talking to you about that, but I have other people who want to ask questions. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I might have to get you. We'll have to do a special, Daria. Um, so uh, uh, pick another question. So um, was there a reason why you chose Spark Streaming over Kafka Streams uh, or Flink for the pipeline? It's a bit of a Spark question, but I'll allow it. Our question. Uh, actually, we use Spark for for other things. It was a technology available in the company. Okay, so just the, this reason. Okay, yeah, familiarity we, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah, familiar cool. with this. We did not compare, like we did not any benchmark or stuff like this. We just uh, showed yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. So. Um, uh, it, so would you agree with this statement? So it, it, the, the question is um, whether you feel that unions are better to do before they get to Druid uh, rather than doing it once it's in Druid. Because I was watching your talk and thinking, I wonder whether you had put the clicks into one data source and you'd put the impressions into another one. You were doing a union or whether you're doing that beforehand. So I guess really it's a, like a bit of a design question about why you decided to do the unions before they arrived at Druid, why you didn't do them inside at Druid somehow. Okay, we tried to use union inside the Druid, actually in Pivot, I know there is an option you define data cube and mm -hmm. you define extra uh, definition, like take also this data cube. Okay, uh, so it, uh, in order to work with it, you still need to uh, to prepare the data. You need to have common field names. Otherwise, it doesn't understand that different types of events have actually the same uh, the same fields. Like we, for example, we use in other system we use kind of prefix to old field names to uh, in all database in all tables like it's not publisher it's some prefix and publisher so if we uh, union these events in Druid, they will have 
different names and we can just select one publisher and to see how many clicks do we have, how many impressions, how many other events. We actually have eight different uh, event type in this union. I'm not sure that Druid or Pivot will do this union for eight different types and uh, work with this smoothly, okay? So. Yes, it sounds like you're doing a level of data preparation yeah. um, uh, yeah. that yeah. needs to be, oh, that yeah. in your, <clears throat> be careful what I say, in your use case, it's better to do that before it arrives in Druid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Good question, that one. Thank you. Um, uh, so, someone's asking, have you put all this on GitHub? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's developer community, right? Um, yeah, is there is there anything that you've published that shows the code that you've written that people can see? Uh, actually, the the code is very out brainy. Like we have our Kafka <laughs> topic with, it. but you know, I thought about it that uh, I kind of uh, shared the ideas when the the idea regarding preparation the data and send, setting the event type to each event helps a lot to deal with the data in Druid. Okay, and the idea with a sampling the, to fix the sample with sample factor is kind of you can use it in any other system. So it's mm. not the code that you just can put to GitHub for other companies. Like, I don't know how it will help because we have very specific way to retrieve data from Kafka. We have some, uh, our proprietary Avro format for Kafka topics. So all of our Spark streaming jobs uh, kind of have some yeah. outbrain code to retrieve the data. But you know, like this slide, uh, this slide, this one, it's kind of generic, everyone can use it. You can have RDD, whatever you have with, with you of your events, okay? And actually this is the key value of your table, right? So sample, this is the core, the, the very simple idea, yeah, but it's... this is the core that other people can take, okay? So it's available. Yeah. I can I, put I, it on the GitHub. I love seeing, we don't, you know, it's good to see a level of detail in your talk. Yeah. I'm very appreciative of that. Um, okay, um, a question about um, the transformations. Is there anything in particular that you did when you were building the pipeline to test those transforms and make sure that they were doing what you expected them to do? Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, first of all, even regardless of transformation, I always uh, validate the data in Druid versus other systems. I need to validate that it makes sense, sense the data that I bring, that the number are uh, valid, okay? So also regarding the transformation, I have a ETL that validates the data. Okay, just compare it with another. First of all, we use pivot, so I just can visual to, to understand, okay, it makes sense. Or maybe I have some problem with the formula or it doesn't make sense, so I can okay, fix it. But uh, also we have ETLs that run every hour, retrieve some specific data and validate it with Vertica, for example. Right. So validation okay. is a very important step when you bring data to your new to to a new system. So yeah, it's just generally good practice. Yeah, you know? exactly. yeah good. Um, uh, when it came to the sampling, um, what drove you to need to do the sampling? Was it because of the query performance? Was it because of the the size of the cluster? Was it a cost function? Um, what was it that drove you to actually come up with the, with the, the sampling the, requirement? Yeah, yeah. We sampled because of uh, the size of the clusters in Druid and also in Kafka. Okay, we have two clusters to handle. Okay, so it was not about uh, query performance. Okay, so right, okay, interesting. Query. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, uh, again, regarding the validation, we see that, uh, like, uh, the numbers with sampling are not exact, sometimes they are exact, but not always. We, 
usually it's a one percent or two percent difference uh, with other system so it's totally fine yeah cool um um checking the time as i'm asking more questions um uh how did you what approach did you take to managing uh and doing sort of change control around the ingestion and transformation specs like do you use some kind of source control tool for that great question yeah yeah <clears throat> uh, we use git for our uh, uh, ingestion spec and we use a jenkins job that after all commit validates the spec and uh, updates the droid oh so it's then submitting it's through the apis yeah. and yeah. oh cool okay that's so you get a good version history over time of what the yeah. spec has yeah. looked like yeah. Yeah, exactly. ah, cool uh, practice because it's big it's big json file okay you can lose and if you change something in druid on the fly you can't undo in so you need you need git for this so some version control it's a good uh, practice to use git control yeah of course cool. so, yeah. you, you've got that embedded in it's quite an automated process by the sound of it do you have like a review process that the specs go through or yes yes like regular commit like we have a code review at outbrain so Actually, I'm kind of used root, but there is a team like DevOps, DevOps team that uh, install and uh, take care of the cluster. So they review all my commits and other teams it's, uh, commit with pull requests. And, but oh, it's that's a regular hit, uh, stuff, right? Yeah, but yeah. For, uh, on the trans on the ingestion with the transformation, like, on the, the ingestion spec itself. Yeah. yeah, cool. That's a good approach. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, one more question I think we've got time for. Do you have other data sources inside Druid that just have fewer columns? They are well curated. Maybe they're focused to particular users in the organization. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We have other use cases. We have uh, some data source that we use to retrieve real time data for publishers. Yeah, so it's a kind of good, uh, it's kind of product. Um, and there we have very specific fields uh, to show to publishers and we have a roll-up feature there because we have small number of dimensions very exact metrics that we need okay and we send this data for, for publishers so we know how they query the data so we build it and we use it it's a yeah, totally Excellent. different uh, use case cool yeah Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your questions as well. Um, and yes, a link to the slides on the recording will be sent out shortly. Uh, please do email us at community at imply.io to get the very latest information about what's happening in the Druid community across the world. And don't forget, there are other members of the Apache Druid community who are dying to hear your story as well, whether that's a five minute interview, a blog post or speaking at a local meetup. I'm sure there's definitely people out there like you who would love to hear how using Apache, you're using Apache Druid. Uh, we can even guide you through getting your name in lights on the projects powered by page. So do email us. Um, Thank you very much, Daria. Again, uh, next from uh, the community, we welcome Sharanya Santonam and Tian Yu Hong from Lyft. And they'll be showing how they enabled real time querying using Druid and Flink. So we've had Spark. Yeah. Now we've got Flink. This is good. Uh, it starts at the top of the hour in about uh, 15 minutes. So I'll see you all there. Thank you, everybody. See you.